That was more than a day's work in three minutes and many hours of editing. But it was fun, fun thinking more about the shots beforehand and thinking about the editing when filming. So I hope you forgive the typical YouTube edit style. <laughs> so we are very excited to get started with the timbering again and we wanted to make something fun out of it. But now I thought that I would uh, talk you through the process of putting one more log on the building. But first, the weather reports. So the temperature went from minus 30 degrees to plus degrees and everything started to melt. And it's still February. We still got a week left of February when filming this. So this winter has not been usual. <laughs> now everything is going to get icy and very hard. <laughs> Almost all the ice from the stream has melted away and the snow from the roof came down in a crash. We never got the time to try the rope trick on the snow on the bigger roof on the cabin. But with a little work and with the help of the new snowblower I got away the snow anyway. From the paths to the outhouse and to the cow house. For those of you who are new here, this building is going to be the entry or entrance to this cabin. Fashtu in Swedish. So that's why it only has three walls. The fourth missing wall is this hole here. But we are building it here because there is more room here to lift the logs on and off and so on. When the snow has melted and the ground frost is thawed, we are going to start to move this over there. Take it down into pieces and assemble it in front of the cabin. The next log is going to be here. And it's a short one because here is the door. But I feel like I need to express some of my insecurities. I don't know much about working with timber. There is a lot more to learn for me. But luckily, I can build a house with the knowledge that I have. But there is probably a lot of things that I do that could be done better. So if an experienced person would watch this, they would probably scratch their head and wonder why I did it that way instead of this way. Or, Yeah, you, you get what I mean. So take everything I do here with a grain of salt. Or how to say. First, I need to measure the height of this log that sticks up here so I know I can't have a, a log here that is too small because then nothing would stick up for the next log so I need to measure here so I know approximately what kind of log will be good here since every every log here is uh, organic or how to say they are not squared off I have a root and a top and this surface is the surface from directly underneath the bark. So every tree is different sizes. So when you're building with timber in this way, it's easier if you have logs that are similar sizes. Not some that is this fat and then some that is very thin. Then you're going to get into trouble when building because you will end up in a situation where where both logs are the same height. You need this uh, distance here for, for the next row of logs. It is also a little bit tricky with the terminology. So I'm going to use some Swedish terms and I have no idea what those are in English, but I'm gonna explain as best as I can. So this thing, the small uh, gap between the logs is called a sort where the roundness of the, both the top and the bottom of the logs connect. As you can see, they are not connecting from the flat uh, surface to the flat surface. They are connecting a little bit inside, or how to say. Here it is illustrated very well. This is called a long drag. This is where we then put moss 
to insulate between the logs. And this long drag, the cutout underneath every log, makes the logs tight against each other. But you can see that the meeting points are not these two points. The meeting point is further in. And that is creating what we call a sort, this uh, space here. The woodpecker is making spring noises. So the, the size of the sort varies because the shape of the logs varies. There is other aspects of why the, the size of the sort varies as well. It also depends on how wide the long drag you made and the width of the long drag is also determined by the shape of the logs. So when we measure now the height of this uh, log from this log, the height difference. We need to measure from an imaginary place where the next log that is going to sit on top of this will meet this log. If that makes sense. So we don't know how big the sort is going to be here, but we can guess sort of about two centimeters in or something. So I'm not measuring from, from uh, all the way out on the edge and I'm not measuring from the top of this roundness. I'm measuring from where I imagine the long drag is going to start. So I put the measuring stick where I believe that the log's going to meet. And then I'm going to... Check the height from, from the top of this log. So that's why I'm using this. So 16 centimeters. This log is sticking up 16 centimeters from the point where I believe the, the two logs is going to meet here. And then I'm usually, usually I, I write it down. So I, <laughs> because I have a hard time with numbers and, and I would forget just the time it takes for me to walk from here and to start to check which log would would fit here, I would forget what I just measured. <laughs> so this means that if I would put here a 16 centimeter thick log, then the surface here would be exactly the same. So next next log would have nothing nothing to to make a not, uh, notch out of, if that makes sense. So I need for the next log here to at least stick up 8 centimeters. You can make the notch in smaller than 8 centimeters here. Because if you end up in a situation where it sticks up very little here, you're gonna get into trouble the next row of logs and the next and the next and you're never gonna get out of it. Here is a typical situation where the, the log for the notch, the stick up for the notch was a little bit too small. So. So this was fine, and this was fine, and this was fine, but the next here was very small. And the smaller this notch is, the more unstable everything gets. And also, when this is very small, this one gets very big. Because this is so small, then and this is so big, then I need to find a log that is very wide to not end up having a very small or or nothing left to build on here. So this is this is perfectly fine. So what do I need here? I need 16 centimeters plus 8 centimeters. That is 24 centimeters. But then I need to make the long drag as well, the groove underneath the log. And that will usually take away about 2 centimeters. 
So for me to get the log to stick up eight centimeters here, I need a 26 centimeter log. But there is one more aspect and that is, this is top, this is root, then I need a top here. Because if you stack all the tops or all the roots on one side, the building is going to be very skewed. More skewed than it already is. So I need a top that is 26 centimeters. And that is a problem. I went for some lunch. We had some eggs and bacon 
a little bit past from the bacon and eggs we usually have. And the sun has gone behind clouds and it's starting to set. We'll see if I manage to finish this today before it gets dark. It takes a lot longer when filming. So the dimensions on the logs I use is 16 centimeters, but it can vary a little bit since the sides are milled on a chainsaw mill. Also depending on how much I removed when preparing the surface. I left a bit of the surface unprepared where the, the notch is going to be. So here you're gonna have to make a choice. I don't really know <laughs> which one is the correct choice here, but you either make the wall as flat as possible on the outside or as flat as possible on the inside. <laughs> Depending on what you're going to do, if you're gonna put some more insulation on the outside or have some uh, wallpaper on the inside or something. Hmm. Which one do you want flat or not? I don't know, but it's best to decide which one and stick to that. The difference should be very mi minimal since every surface here is alive and, and not even an anywhere. Uh, it, visually it doesn't really matter, but, but I guess it can have some impact for when you are further along in the building process. The problem is I don't remember what I decided when I started this building. <laughs> So I guess I'm just gonna continue and hope that it was the outside. Doesn't really, I can't really see because they are, they are so similar anyway. So just wanted to point it out. If someone is watching this and starting to build something and have differences between the dim dimensions on the, on the logs they are <laughs> building with. And as I said, it's only important if you are planning on putting something on, on top of the wall. If you are building with round logs, you're just going to have it centered, I guess. So I, I drew a line here in, uh, that is straight or how to say. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And now I just connect these two lines. And for that I use a piece of metal. At least in Sweden, when you go to the lumber yard, they tie bundles of lumber together with, with metal strips, or how to say. And uh, those are perfect for, for making a small ruler to, to bend over the, the logs. So I've just cut a length of that and uh, rounded the edges so I won't hurt myself. So now I got one side marked and then I measure the thickness of the log that is supposed to be here. and just transfer that measurement here. So it's better if the notch you cut here first gets too small, because if it gets too big, then that is no good. So this height here was 16 centimeters. So now we need to have a line at eight centimeters. And the eight centimeters is just a half of the 16 centimeters. So if we would have an, uh, a log here with 
20 centimeters, we would make the line at 10 centimeters. And I'm not measuring down here 8 centimeters up. I'm measuring from the top down because depending on where I decided where that long drag is going to come, I don't remember exactly where I had the, the measurement stick. And now to transfer this on the other side at this exact same, so when I cut here it will become level. I just measure on the same point on, on this, like this, and then make the mark there. So I do this by watching the bubble and putting this on 8 centimeters, like this. And then the bu when the bubble is straight, I make a mark. I'm thinking there should be some kind of tool where I can have a, a little uh, thumb screw and a measuring stick on something with a bubble. So I wouldn't need to... <laughs> this works, but, but I'm thinking it would be nice to have a tool for, the, for this exact purpose. I guess I need to make one. I haven't seen anything on the market. I've seen something on the market that seems like it could work for this, but I need a, a pretty long edge to to rest on the, on the log here. And, and th those that I have seen is just small ones with not so much. Yeah. So now I got two lines here, one one on each side that should be on the exact same level. And now we're going to remove this piece. I missed the line, but it was sort of on purpose. It's better if you come out with the chainsaw on, on the right side of the line than on the wrong side. Tuo went out with Ivar in the stroller now, so he's going to sleep now. So I can't use the chainsaw until he wakes up and uh, then it will be dark. So we'll continue tomorrow. Well, it is the next day. Ivar has already had his uh, first nap of the day and I've been editing this video all morning. So now I need to get on with this before Ivar needs to go to sleep again. The next step now is to make what I've been taught is called a cut. So yeah, I guess I'll show you. I'm going to draw a line here four centimeters in from the edge and the four centimeters I don't know where that measurement comes from and it doesn't matter that much 
The only thing is, I guess, you don't want this line to be more than half of the width of the log. So just so you get a cut in here. And we're going to remove this now. And then I also make a line here. Um, just to have some reference. So now I'm going to cut here along this line, but not further down than this. We are going to end up somewhere here, I guess. But for safety, I, I drew this line a little bit higher than the, the log here beneath. In Sweden, this is called a knut yxa, and that could maybe be translated to notch axe or something. This is a knut in Swedish, so knut yxa. And it's like an axe that is smaller and is like a chisel, but with, a, with an axe handle. So you get some chopping force instead of using a chisel and a mallet. And you could use a chisel as well for this job. And sometimes it's easier with a chisel than with this knutyxa. Those who teach me about timbering call this type of notch for enkelkats knut, and that can be sort of translated to one notch. Notch. <laughs> I don't really know how to best explain this, but it got only one of these cuts on one side not on both sides. You can make this as a du double cut, double cut knut as well. There is benefits and disadvantages to both of them. But I decided to go for this kind of notch on this uh, building. On the house with the old logs, it is a double uh, double cut knut. So in Swedish we call this a cut, and this one is a betta, and this is moose. And this is here so you can insulate the notch. The log that comes here is against this one, and then you press moss or something here in, into this uh, smaller notch here. So this cut here is really important. And moose is the Swedish word for mouse. And cut is the Swedish word for for cat. Betta, I don't know. So 
So to make the double double cut knut or notch, you would uh, simply make a line here at four centimeters, and then take a, away another one of these. Uh, yeah, make a cut here as well. But we're not going to do that here. Hi. Can I walk with you a little bit? Maybe I'll go with him to bagan. Good team, bro. Har du en key? The disadvantage with the double cut hey. knut is that uh, the the notch is getting weaker mm. Mm. and also if if on the outside it starts to uh, rain rain falls down and it can start to gather water here mm. inside and th that's not good but mm. i don't know if that is really i don't know really if that is uh, something that one should be <laughs> afraid of but it could happen the disadvantage is that it's harder to get this log here to to follow this uh, edge nicer i'll show you Kan vi ge halm till hundarna också? Mm. Mm. Ja. Fick hönsen lite halm? Ja. Ska vi få några ägg snart? Det är ju nästan vår nu. Eller vad tror du? Vi fick två ägg. Vi fick två ägg igår. Ja, kanske vi börjar få ägg. Se du, har vi fått ägg? Två ägg idag också. Two eggs. Mm. Mm. Now it's starting. Here you can see examples of what I mean. If I would have a double cut, I could hide this inside the log. Because then I would have taken out a piece, a cut, in this log. Here is a bigger hole. So aesthetically it's nicer with a double cut notch. I'm not sure if I could explain that so you would understand, but we're gonna continue with the work and maybe it will clear itself up. So this small notch here that I made, if, if this is the log that is going to come here in the notch, you can see that there is not there is not much insulating here but when when the log is like this and you press tightly moss into this notch then the whole notch is going to become draft free So the notch is a little bit smaller than the log and that is better than if it were too big. So now I need to make this notch a little bit bigger to fit the log here 
And there is also another aspect here that I want this notch to be tight against this log that is going to come here. I want it to be tight here on this edge. It doesn't have to be tight here inside because that's going to be covered by everything and I'm not going to see this. So at least here. And so if the log touches here, then it's going to be hard to get it tight here. So this surface from, from this point to this other point can be a little bit concave, I think, like this. So I can chop with my axe here and remove some wood here on the inside. So I know that it's not going to be tight here, but it's going to be tight on the outsides here. And the same on this side. So I'm making this surface a little bit bowl shaped. And for this I mostly use this kind of axe, timmerbila in Swedish. I don't remember what the term for this kind of axe is in English. And now in this situation is why you need this kind of axe to reach, reach to the bottom here. It's harder to do this job with this axe since it's so long, the precision is not so good. It's a lot better with the, the bigger axe, but I can't reach down here with that one. Now it's a good time also to shape this side of the log head, or what to call this, Knutskalle in Swedish. I flattened a little bit on this Knutskalle here. Uh, I don't want this surface to be 
on the same level as the rest of the log because I don't want the logs to connect out here so I want this to be as tight as possible and not here here it's supposed to be a little bit space between the logs so you can be sure that over here it is all the weight of the house is over here not here And you also want this surface to be a little bit down sloping or outward sloping. If for some reason there comes some raindrops or something here, you don't want it to go down into the notch, just out. Here you can see now that I chopped with the axe here so that the surface here is a little bit concave. That means that when I have the log here now, I'm making sure that the contact points are out here and out here and not inside here. So it fits perfectly. Now I need to make the bottom notch on this log. And since I don't have a notch on the other side in this case, just one notch, I need to put something under here to, to simulate the other notch that is not here. Otherwise the lines that I'm going to draw here is going to be not accurate. Seems okay. And before I draw any lines here, I need to make sure that this log is now where I want it to be. This is now the hard part. I don't know if this is exactly how this log is going to be when it's in place. So the line I'm going to draw here could become a little bit crooked. And this particular part is easier with the double notch notch. made some marks here just just for reference I'm also going to mark under underneath here and the same on this side on this side is is further in because of the cut we made earlier So these are now the lines that we just drew. So I'm gonna connect these. And this is on the outside of the house and this is on the inside of the notch. I'm going to Measure this and this is 12 centimeters and I'm going to add one centimeters 
and I'll explain why in a second. Now we need to go measure how deep or how large a chunk we are going to remove from this log. This betta was 12 centimeters and I added one centimeter because I want it to be tight here but not here because here we are going to make room for moss as insulation. So almost nothing of the log is going to touch inside this notch. The log is only going to lay with all its weight on this log and also in here. This is kind of hard to explain and show because when I'm done you're not going to see <laughs> any of that because it's inside the notch. But now we need to measure how big a chunk we are going to remove from that one. And here it says six centimeters. This beta is six centimeters. To remember we are going to go down here and we are also going to make long drag the groove on that log so at least eight centimeters i would guess after that we will probably have to remove a little bit more to get some room here for moss this is a place where a chunk went away there was an uh there was a knot here so it became an unintended hole in the house here but here but here you could see what i mean this log is laying with all its weight here but not in the notch in the notch there is a hole or there is space between the the other log and this log so it's laying with all its weight here but not in the notch. Here is going to be moss. And I can illustrate this because this was a mistake. Otherwise you wouldn't see this. Here you can see a little bit. So what did we say? Eight centimeters. So this is now the underside of the log in case somebody missed that. Uh, I'm just gonna check so that the log is fairly straight or how to say not leaning because then these measurements will differ and I'm using the same method just eight centimeters and make a mark and the same on the other side So now we'll remove this.
Now, do you remember I left a piece here? I didn't, I didn't remove all the way down here. That is because I'm trying to, to, to make it like this, and not like this. Here, I removed too much beforehand, so I couldn't follow the curve of the log. Here, I could sort of. It was a little bit of a miss. I was too eager to remove here. Still, I don't want the log to be with its weight here. I want it to be here. Now we need to adjust this so that this log can lay on top of the other log. A little bit tighter than this. So I measure this gap with the, whatever this is called in English. More on this tool later. And then I'll draw a little bit here. Follow the, the edge of the log with this side of the caliper or what to call it. Now I know I need to remove that much for this to come down here. In the end we're going to get closer to here. So for this job I use a rounded chisel and it's straight. Uh, I could probably have a bigger one but I really like this smaller one because it requires less force to remove the wood I think. The bigger one removes more wood in one chunk. With this one I can really nicely remove a little bit at a time. Now comes the most interesting part in this process. And I believe this is also the thing that separates the traditional American style of building with timber from the Scandinavian style. There has been buildings done this way in America as well. But oftentimes when I see American log buildings, they are ready in this stage with the log building. And now they just put uh, some clay or something here to, uh, to seal this gap. But we are going to use this. There is probably someone that already has told me what this is in, in English, but uh, divider is the thing that Google Translate says to me when I search for passare in Swedish. It's just a simple divider with a pen on the on one side and a pointy 
point on the other side. So now we are going to so now we are going to transfer this surface up onto this log with the divider. So I'm going to see here where is the biggest hole so I can determine the, the width of the divider. It has to be it has to be a little bit bigger than the biggest hole we have here. And I can't make it as big so it won't fit on the slopey areas. So I have no really good example to show you here, but, but if there would be a, a little knot here, like this, but here, and, and all the unevenness on this log is going to transfer to the line on this side. So when I make the groove underneath this log, it's going to fit exactly on this log. And it's best to check that this width is uh, working everywhere. On the other side as well. And I'm trying to do this with the, the divider as straight as possible. Not like this and not like this. Straight as possible. I also uh, save this width on the log like this. If I need to go back to this width, I can take this measure measurement here. With this same length, I'm just turning it the other way around and adjusting this so the distance between this point and the pen is the distance this log is going to travel down when we make the groove here on the other side that's why i know this point here is going to be over here when we are finished You got to make sure that the line is visible everywhere before you remove this because when when you move this you can't put it back because then it won't be in the exact same place and start drawing again then you have to draw everything from scratch and before you start to draw it's very important that the log is where it should be not skewed or something in, in the way or I don't know. There is fancier dividers than this. There are uh, really nice ones with bubbles, level bubbles and and where you can point the pen a little bit upward and this point a little bit downward. This can have the problem that the pen starts to touch the wood instead of the, the color of the pen or how to say. So you're not drawing anything. <laughs> you would be able to point the pen a little bit upwards it would be nicer but those are really expensive and this works very well and if you don't have one of these you can just use two of this and have that <coughs> as as a uh, how to say support for a pen and then you can or if you need three of them maybe would have been good in this and then draw like this another solution is if you have a lot of different size chisels you can also use the chisel and draw like this and then see where the mark is 
so that's also a possibility in i guess in old times they used chisels or they had a special tool not with a pen but with uh, just two pointy points <laughs> that you could adjust we need to make an adjustment here as well so i don't want this to touch this one as i said earlier so to make some to make an even space or try to make an even space i take two of these and add that to the width of this so i just put these on the bottom on, on top of this and then this on top of this and draw a line and the same on the other side so in the end hopefully we will have a gap between these two that is as thick as these two So these are the lines that we just draw. So we're going to remove a groove here between these two. So this is now what we in Sweden call long drag. There is probably a lot of other older terms for this groove in Swedish as well. But I've learned to call it long drag. I usually come pretty close to the line with the chainsaw and then I adjust a little bit with the axe afterwards. And now hopefully this will fit perfectly on top of the other log. If it doesn't, then we have to adjust it and make it all again. One has a couple of tries to adjust it, but if you totally mess up, you need to take a new piece of log. <laughs> That's the hard part with this. log didn't come all the way down here so this is the process now after you have made the, the long drag you need to check what is wrong now because the log didn't come all the way down and the fault here is that the notch in this log the under notch is not as deep as it need to be
I'm happy with this result. So the challenge is to make it as tight as possible here with no gaps. Here is a little bit of a gap, but it's really hard to get it totally even along the whole log. But it's still less of a gap that I could pull one of these there. And the corner became very nice. Now I just need to cut this to length and shape it a little bit. One more in place, several more to go. So this is how I do this kind of timbering now. So now I talked about one kind of notch and two variations of it, the double cut or single cut notch. So as it is on this side now that the log goes into the notch the log would go into the notch here as well if it were a double cut. Maybe someone would understand what I'm talking about. I know how to do one other type of, of notch, but that is a very long time since I have done that, so I need to refresh my memory about that. This, I believe, is one of the simplest kind of notches to make. I usually shape these nicely and cut them to length as I'm building instead of instead of building up the whole structure and then do all this work afterwards. The how to form the shape of the the Knutskull, this, uh, this uh, log head uh, is a, an, an aesthetic choice as well. So we could, one could decide to cut the corners more and, and make them other shapes, but I, I find this really simple shape very pleasing. Another aspect is why did I, rem why did I prepare the surface like this, chopping with the axe on the surface like this. So these logs are milled, so they have a uh, 
so sun surface and I want to remove that because uh, a cut surface doesn't suck up water as easily as the surface after you have sawn something. Sawn, do you say that? Sågat. And it's also much more aesthetically pleasing with this kind of texture. It's starting to get dark again. Today we are going to eat lamb. Lamb leg. Shinka. A ham of a lamb. I don't know if you say that. And remember now, I know next to nothing about this. I just showed you how I do it here. And I would really like to learn more. It would be nice to work alongside someone that has more experience. Like, for example, Isaac Stalenhag. You can check out his Instagram for, for some really nice timbering. But for real, this is not so hard. They could do it in the old times without any education, so anyone could do this. Well, I hope you learned something, or at least found it entertaining. It was an extra long special. Hmm? As with much else, there is probably a lot of things that could be done differently. Hmm. Yeah. I'll say it. Come to me. <laughs> As usual, we want to thank all our wonderful patrons. This wouldn't be possible without you, so thank you. Thank you very much. So I guess this is it for this episode. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Kukkeliku! Yeah. What hmm. does the rooster say? It's spring! Puss! Puss! <laughs> what does the rooster say in all other languages? cock a doodle doo <laughs> <laughs> We had an episode where we asked that. No, no, it was an Instagram... Uh, oh post where I asked mm. and got a lot of funny answers. answers. Yeah. Kukiliku in Swedish. Mm. Kukiliku! Clock on the shoe! <laughs> yeah, I have a month with that. A month with that. A month with that. Where should I do? Thank <laughs> you.